Isang magandang biyernes sa inyong lahat. September 23, 2022, Friday. At alam nyo ba, 93 days na lang, Pasko na. Mabuhay po kayong lahat. Welcome po sa the stock market today. Ang ating news ay isang special report on the Philippine equity, courtesy of BDO Securities. Pero bago ang lahat, ako po si Benji Chidoro, isang retired bank officer na nag-start mag-invest sa Philippine stock market noong 2007. At uh, binabalita ko po ang pinaka-latest news tungkol sa inyong paborito at pinaka-active stock sa Philippine market. At kung gusto niyo po ng content, niimbitahan ko po kayo mag-subscribe sa aking channel. Kung meron po kayong mga tanong tungkol sa stock market, tungkol sa wealth management, at tungkol sa mga stocks na gusto niyong ipa-review, paki-comment lang po sa comment box at aking pra-prioritize. At sa inyong mga tanong ay sasagutin ko po siya sa abot ng aking makakaya. By the way, hindi po ako financial advisor. Ang mga sinasabi ko po dito ay hindi po financial advice. And again, we're praying for you, Mari. Merong awa ang Diyos. I believe in miracles. And we believe in miracles. And I know that you will be well soon. Okay? Marami po salamat. Huwag kayong alis dahil babahagi ko sa inyo ang ating financial headlines at ang resulta ng trading sa ating PSE ngayong araw, September 23, 2022. Dito lamang sa The Stock Market Today. Okay, punta na po tayo sa ating financial headlines at dito po yan sa BDO SEC, ano? BSP hikes rates to tame inflation. So as you already know, 50 basis points po ang uh, tinaas at ang ating benchmark rates na reverse to purchase ay nasa 4.25% na po. And uh, ang inflation outlook naman ay 5.6% for 2022. Yan po, no? So, mga mag increase pa po yan ng mga 75 to 100 basis points by the end of the year. Yan po ang tingin ko dyan. Okay, Congress not keen on carbon tax. Mer to conduct another bid challenge for the 500 megawatt supply. U.S. dollars, 150 million domestic submarine cable connects to Mindanao. And ASEAN lists 10 billion peso ASEAN green bonds. Pero ang ating news ay isang special report, no? galing din po ng BDO Securities to. Defensive dividend plays amid rising volatility. And uh, this is a summary or their recommendation kung anong dapat bilhin on rising interest rates. Ano? Sabi niya dito, rising interest rates may shift investments from equity to bonds. Actually, bumababa po yung equities ano? dahil humihina po yung negosyo ng mga kumpanya because of high interest rates. No? And slowing economic activity brought about by weaker and weaker corporate earnings. So expectations for rising interest rates also pushed government security yields to increase 201 to 207 basis points for the 5-year to 10-year papers to 6.2% to 6.9%. So yung mga existing pong bonds, nagmumura po yan. So kung ang presyo niya before the inflation was, example lang po, 100. At uh, yung kanyang coupon rate ay 6%. Ang gagawin po niya para yung 6% maging competitive, para i-raise niya yun o maging attractive yung 6%, mumurahan niya yung presyo ng underlying security or the bond itself. So, imbis na 100, gagawin niya siguro 95 or 90 to compensate for the fixed 6%. Ano? Kasi yung 6%, hindi mo na pwedeng baguhin yan. Hindi mo pwedeng gawin 6.2, 6.5. Hindi po eh. Kasi na... Nasa papel na po yan eh. 
ang pwede lang gawin is babaan mo yung presyo ng bond. Kaya po, inverse ang relationship. So, next is bond proxies in local equities. However, we note several dividend-paying stocks that can provide steady yields like the GS while also offering considerable potential share price upside over the medium to long term given their expanding business portfolios. Based on current prices, REITs under our coverage are seen to generate decent dividend yields of 6.3 to 7.8 percent from their quality leasing portfolios while telcos are also expected to sustain healthy yields of 5.8 to 6 percent given their stable and growing cash flows as such we believe REITs and telcos fairly mimic the defensive qualities of bonds as they provide stable dividends in a volatile market environment however these dividend stocks also offer added bonus of higher potential returns through capital appreciation over time. So, one thing that you can invest upon is bonds. But another, ang sinasabi niya dito, bond proxies local equities. Ano? Ibig sabihin, there are some equities here, like the REITs and TELCOS, that approximate yung bonds. Kasi, yung yield niya ay continuous and there is a demand. No, meron pong demand. So, ang pinapropose niya dito ay una yung REITs, no? quality assets and portfolio expansion to increase REIT returns. Kasi ano po yan eh? Opening of the economy and yung occupancy rate is 97 to 99%. Remember, sa portfolio ng REIT are buildings. Ano? At yung buildings na yan, nire-rent po ng company sa labas. At yung occupancy rate ay almost 100%. Annual rental escalation steady at 3 to 10%. Even during the height of the pandemic, these REITs also offer sizable headroom for growth considering potential asset infusions from their respective sponsors. So tatlo yung nire-recommend niya dito is A-REIT, M-REIT, and RCR. So itong tatlong ito would give very good dividends over time in addition to capital appreciation over time. So yung ARIT, meron pong um, target price na 47 and uh, MRIT is 2250 and the RCR is 865. Ano? So puro may mga upside po ito. So growing demand for connectivity and fintech services to support telco dividends. Dalawa po yung telcos na nagbibigay po ng magandang dividends, si Globe at si PLDT. And captured po, po nila yung market. PLDT is 51.7% of total mobile subscribers, while Tel has a 52.7% market share. And maganda po magbigay ng dividendo ito, no? So, although bumababa po ngayon ang kanilang mga stocks and shares, maganda pong mag-invest dito. And here, hindi po tayo short term dito ah. Long term po ang tingin po natin dito. Kasi kung short term lang po ay mag-ibang uh, stocks na po tayo. No? Mag-speculative na po tayo o pwede sa mga index stocks. But itong sinasabi po ni BDO SEC dito are all long term investments. Anong ibig po sabihin ng long term? Ang horizon mo ang tinitignan dyan is 3 to 5 years or more than than that. No? Kasi kung short term lang po kayo, maaaring a few days to 1 year, siguro hanggang 2 or 3 years, 2 years siguro, pero pagka 3 to 5 years and even longer than that, yan po yung time horizon na dapat yung tignan para makuha nyo yung benefits ng capital appreciation and at the same time, kumikita po kayo ng dividendo. Ngayon po, meron pong mga statistics na pinakita dito. Una po ay si yung comparison between the two telcos, ano, Globe and PLDT. Pareho po may buy rating at uh, yung upside po niya based dito sa target price Globe has a 33.1% per 
and 33.5. Halos pareho lang po. Yung P-E ratio, alam po ninyo, ang P-E ratio, the lower the number, the better. Ngayon, mas uh, maganda po ang P-E ratio ng PLDT and 13.05 is not bad. No? So, halos makalapit na po yung forecast P-E ratio for 2022. And for 2023, bumaba po ng konti, pero maganda pa rin ang P-E ratio ng PLDT at 9.5. In terms of earnings per share, mas mataas po ang earnings per share ni PLDT compared po dito sa Globe. At for 2023, tumaas ng konti at tumaas ng konti si Globe but PLDT is still better. In terms of dividend yield, mas mataas ng konti si PLDT pero halos magkapantay na rin po. No? At alam niyo po, po ninyo, si Globe Telecom, meron pong SRO ngayon. Kung meron po kayong Globe, Take advantage niyo po yun. Murang-mura po. 1,680 po yung SRO niya. Kung meron po kayong globe, grab it. Because it's a good investment. Pagdating ng price over book value, again, the lower the number, the better, halos pantay lang po sila. Ngayon, pagdating sa REITs, yung top 3 REITs, si A REIT, M REIT, at RL Commercial REIT, ang uh, upside, no? Ang may pinakamalaking upside is the M rate with 53 and followed by RL commercial rate. Halos magkapantay lang po, 52. And the lowest number is 26.7 si A rate. Pero pagdating sa PE ratio, ganun din. Ano? M rate and RL or RLC or commercial rate at 14, mas mataas po si M rate. So better PE po si M rate. And uh, pagdating ng 2023 forecast, ganun din. No? Mas mababa rin po si MREIT at saka si RL Commercial REIT kesa sa ARIT. But I'm not saying na hindi na maganda si ARIT. Ha? Actually, maganda po yan for long-term investment. Lahat po yan. No? Kasi si ARIT mukhang nagmamature na po siya. Kaya po ganito, no? higher PE ratio. Okay, in terms of dividend yield, mas maganda pa rin ang dividend yield ni MREIT at ni RL Commercial REIT. Samantala naman, ang price to book value ratio, mas mababa po si MREIT kaysa sa ARIT. And sa unang tingin ay maganda si MREIT at RL Commercial REIT. Pero you have to choose your stocks. Ano? Kasi MREIT, is ma yung management po niyan ay magaganda. At Ayala Company po yan. So take your pick. No? Take your pick. Ako partial po ako sa Ayala <laughs> Partial po ako sa Ayala. Kahit ganito po yung figures niya, hindi naman po nagkakalayo. Yung dividend yield halos pareho lang. Kung stability ang pag-uusapan natin, mas stable po si Emery. Because proven na po yung track record ng management ng Ayala. Okay? Pero hindi ko po sinasabing pangit po si Emery at RL Commercial Rate in terms of management. No? Hindi ko po sinasabi yon. Basta... Ako ay biased ako sa MA rate. Eh. Bias po ako sa Ayala. Yan po yung preference ko. But you may have your own preference. Okay po. So yan po ang ating special report. And let's check po kung meron po kayong comments here. And I think I saw one. Maraming po salamat sa inyong support. Ha? At uh, tingnan po natin. Norman commented. More power po sir. Every day po ako nakasubaybay sa inyong YouTube video ninyo. Salamat po sa analysis ninyo. Marami po akong natututunan. Norman, marami po salamat sa inyo. At uh, dahil sa inyo ay lumalago at uh, nag improve ang ating YouTube video. Jonas Federico, Sir, is it okay to invest in mutual fund? No time to monitor the market. Okay lang po yun. Mutual funds, UITFs, VUL, Okay lang po. Kasi manage na naman po yan ng professional managers. Eh. And I think kung equities ang pag-uusapan, well, tingnan nyo lang no, yung mga holding periods niya. No? I think equities is 30 days holding period eh, bago mo mabenta. No? So okay lang po yan. Mutual funds. Actually, you can also invest in fixed income. Eh. Pero meron online yan eh, yung mutual funds. Pero kung uh, meron kang time at... Uh, Kahit hindi mo na i-monitor, ito, PLDT, Globe, A-REIT, M-REIT, RL Commercial REIT. Kumikita ka ng dividend, pagkatapos may 
uh, upside pa ho, may capital appreciation pa. Iwanan mo na lang yun. Wala nang isip-isip ka, bili ka, tapos iwanan mo na lang. Tapos before you know it, every quarter meron kang dividend for REITs. Every quarter po magbigay yan, ha? Itong M REIT, A REIT, RL Commercial REIT, meron kang nakukuha ng dividend every quarter. I think PLDT and Globe, I think, gives twice a year. Pero malalaki po ang dividendo nito, ha? Yun lamang po. Pero if your preference is mutual funds, okay din po yun. Okay. So, let's now go to the index. Ano kaya nangyari ngayon? Okay po. It's another red day for the index and probably the PSE as a whole, ano? 6259.54 ang ating index. At uh, it's down by 42.17%. And since September 13, bumababa po siya, no? And uh, every day, since that day, I several percentage, tingnan natin kung ilang points na yung binaba ng ating index. More or less po, no? It's down by 6.84% or 557 to 558 points ang down ng ating index. So, it's approaching over sold levels at nasa 32 na. At uh, nasa 62.59, ano? Next support level ay nandito na po sa 6100 level. Ngayon, samantala naman, ang ating market activity, 92. Ang nag-decline, 95 ang umubante, at 42 ang hindi nagbago. So, halos pantay lang, ano? Pero yung ating all share index ay baba, 0.45%, almost flat. Yung financials, holding companies, at properties ay bumaba. Samantalang industrials, mining, at services ay umakyat. So, mixed po siya. And ang nag-dominate po ay yung holding companies. Bumaba po siya ng 1.1%. So, tignan po natin ang inyong request. Sir, request po si SSP, sabi ni Isip Roman. Okay. Raquel Robrigado, sir, gusto... Yes, sir. Gusto ko po mga bonds and ARIT noted po lahat ng stable companies na ina-analyze po ninyo. Thank you po so much, sir. Okay po. So, magpatuloy po tayo. Ang request po ninyo ay SSP. Then, let's do the top 5. Ano? Si Ali, ICT, MBT, SM, and BPI. Okay, so let's start with SSP. Request po ito ni Isip. Oh, ano nangyari dito? Umakyat siya, ha? Hmm, let, let's check, ano? Volume is um, 17.34 million or 10.26 million shares, ano? Ang nagpalita ng kamay. At tingnan natin kung meron pong news. Wala naman dito, puro mga buyback transactions po ito. But anyway, this is a breakout. So, patuloy na umakyat si SFA or SFA, Semicon or SSP yung kanyang stock code. No? At may, napakalaki po ng volume niya. At hindi ko alam kung anong news dito. Ang dati pong, ang dati pong resistance na naging support ay nandyan po sa 1.64%. At ang taas po niya ay 6.79%. So definitely this is a breakout and it is bullish overbought na po yung stock. So is this the highest 52-week high? Opo, eto nga po. 52-week no? high po ito. So hindi ko po malalagyan. Baka pwede gawin natin weekly. Yung resistance niya, actually... Masasabi po natin na resistance level na po ito eh. Yan o, oh, kasi nandito po yung pinaka based on a one week chart ha. Yan na po eh. Nasa 1.73 po yung resistance level or within that, that area ha. Within that area po yung kanyang resistance level. Balik po natin sa one day. Yan po. So mukhang uh, nagpipick na po itong si SSP unless of course meron po uling volume 
on the following day. Usually po, nagko-consolidate lang po ito eh. Or sometimes, pagka merong demand for the stock ay umaakyat po. But usually, there is what you call a consolidation. Ano? Or, minsan nakakaroon po ng continuation. So, bullies po si SSP and overbought na po yung stock at 79. Pagka nag-reach po kasi ng 70 and umakyat pa po yan, overbought na po ang ibig pong sabihin nun. Okay, then next we have Ali. Si Ali ay, naku talagang bearish siya. No? Pero alam niyo magandang bumili ng mga stocks na ngayon dahil depressed po eh. At uh, when this is all over or in the coming days, nakikita ko pong magbabargain hunting po ang mga investors dyan sa ating mga index stocks. No? Because Ali is already 25 pesos and kung makikita po natin yung presyo ni Ali Ayala Land nasa 38 pesos eh. So kung nasa 25 po siya ngayon, mga 50% po yung upside niya. So support, actually this is support level. Nasa 25 po ang support level niya eh. Resistance nandito po sa area nito. Nasa almost 30 pesos po ang pinaka-resistance. Approaching oversold level na po itong si Ali. Kung long-term investor po kayo at uh, Friday pa naman ay tingin ko magbabounce back po itong si Ali. Then next is we have ICT. Talagang depressed po si ICT pero green candlestick po siya ngayon. I gain 90 centavos although this is support level. Fundamentally, kung titignan po natin si International Container Terminal, lakihan lang natin ng konti, nasa 279 po or a 54% upside po si ICT. Sideways to bearish po ang kanyang movement at maganda pong kumuha dahil depressed po yung mga stocks na yan. So kung long term investor po kayo, again, now is the time to buy kung meron po kayong extra cash, no? So, yan po yung support level niya, resistance, nandito po sa 193 level. Pagkatapos naman, I see MBT. MBT ay, again, moving sideways po si MBT. At uh, mukhang maganda. Alam niyo, meron nagtanong sa akin, I don't know if it, it was ESIP or somebody else, Ano ba yung mga stocks na hindi apektado ng uh, hindi apektado ng interest rates, inflation? Ang una kong sagot was lahat ng negosyo apektado. And then when I ask my wife, meron bang stocks na inflation proof? Actually, lahat naman apektado ng inflation. Only that, ang pinaka resilient po na stock ay bank stocks dahil they have other sources of income. Eh. Especially yung mga unibanks. So, maaring yung loans nila ay napakataas at uh, walang nagbabaro dahil mataas yung rate. They have other sources of income like yung treasury nila, meron proprietary fund. Kumikita po sila when they play with interest rate as long as their view is correct. Yan po. So, basta tama po yung view nila, tama po yung call na, ah, si Fed. Uy, in the coming days, magtataas ang interest rate. Magpo-position na po yan. Bibili na po yan ng US dollar. Yan, yung mga ganun ba? Na yung rate noon ay napakababa. Na, nasa 50, nasa 51. Ngayon, nasa 58. Di kumita ka na ng 6 or 7 or 8 pesos na. Di ba? Anyway, si MBT po ay... Sideways to bullish po ang dating sa akin at let's draw a Darbus box on the short term. Yan po ang nakikita ko for MBT. So, the higher border would be a 54 at 54.31 and the lower border is at 50.60. Yan po yung pinaka support and resistance po natin. Support is 50.60 and Resistance at 54.51. Sideways to bullish po ang galaw po niya. Ang RSI ay medya-medya lang po. 
Pero fundamentally, tignan natin po si Metro Bank. Metro Bank, malapit na ma-achieve yung kanyang target price. Ano? Nasa 68 or 31% upside. So, minsan po, pagka yung technicals ay malakas, and sometimes yung fundamentals, nilalagpasan niya. Kasi nag, uh, nag-ahari yung mga technicals. Ano? But of course, I'm more inclined on the fundamental side. Sa timing ko po ginagawa yung technicals. Okay, so that's MBT. And then SM. So take the case of uh, DMC. Kasi ang DMC, ang technical po niya, tignan natin ha, DMC Holdings, 1020 po eh. Pero 998 yung kanyang presyo, no? Tumaas po ngayon. Tingnan natin si DMC. Ayan, bullish siya eh. Bullish siya oh. Si DMC, pero flat po siya ngayon. So, ideally, ay pataas po siya, no? Pero right now, mukhang magbababa po ito dahil head and shoulders. Anyway, nag-side trip lang po tayo. At balik tayo kay, nasa na ba tayo? MBT. Yan, no? So, resistance is at 54.30. And support is at 50, 60, bullish to sideways. Next, we have SM. See, si SM, I, okay, just moving sideways, pero more on the bearish side siya. Nagdi-dip po si SM. So again, kung Darvas box po ang pag-uusapan natin, yan po, no? Ang pinaka-support and resistance niya, nasa 817.5. 60 or 0.50 ang kanyang support and resistance is nasa 883 sideways to bearish po ang dating nasa 40 pesos pero yung lower support nandito po eh nasa 770 so hindi pa po natin alam ang dulo nito no? kung kailan magtatank yung market I hope it tanks already meaning tank meaning bagsak yung bagsak na bagsak okay Friday kasi ngayon eh. So, most of the traders make profit taking. And then, finally, we have BPI. Si BPI, yan, sideways to bearish. You know? Sideways to bearish. Pero, ang nakikita ko kasi dito, mag-draw nga tayo ng parallel channel. Pag ganyan yung nakikita ko eh. Pag ganyan yung movement niya. More or less, ano? On the short term, ganyan po. But nagdi-tip po siya ngayon. Anyway, it lost 80 centavos today. At pagkatapos, ang pinaka-support based on the parallel channel is at 93.45 and 99.21 naman yung resistance. Bullish po ang nakikita ko dyan. Bullish to sideways po. Pero nasa 43 po yung RSI. Now, yung problema natin sa interest rates, it affects the stock market eh. But uh, yung mga stocks na discuss, diniscuss ko ngayon, index stocks like Ali, ICT, MBT, SM, and BPI, they are very good stocks. Maaring babagsak ngayon, but if you are investing in them long term, then on the long run, magka-capital appreciation po yan. Kikita po kayo. Okay, yan po ang ating report sa stock market. Ika-23 ng Setyembre. Ito po si Benji Chidoro, nagpapaalala. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagsabaybay at hanggang sa muli. Happy weekend. Stay safe. God bless. And bye for now.